So I'm going to talk about the uh, cause of Parkinson's disease, and it all has to do with uh, one protein called alpha-synuclein. So that's what this is all going to be about. And um, Okay, so uh, just a little bit of background before I get to that. Um, a lot of the ad recent advances in our understanding of Parkinson's disease, and I should maybe preface this even further by saying what I'm going to be talking about is not really the symptomatic treatment to Parkinson's disease. I'm talking about the underlying degeneration because, as we all know, the drugs work great at the beginning of the disease, and then they develop complications, and then non-motor symptoms develop, which don't respond to replacement of L-DOPA. And uh, what we really need in the long run is something that treats the underlying degenerative process. That's really, you know, what I and many people feel is the crucial issue. So a lot of the understanding of the underlying degenerative process has come in the last 10, 15 years from genetics. That is looking at families of affected patients and mapping the genes that are responsible. And one of the first genes that was identified um, is this gene up here, PARC1. Um, and uh, it was uh, originally identified in some Italian and Greek families, um, actually by Bob Nussbaum, who was then at NIH and is now actually here at UCSF. Uh, he's a very distinguished human geneticist, and he identified mutations in a gene called alpha-synuclein as the cause for a rare forms of idiopath uh, rare forms of Parkinson's disease. Um, since then, many other genes not many, but a number of other genes have been identified, some of which you may have heard about, Parkin, PINK1, DJ1, LRRK2, and a bunch of other genes. But one of the reasons why we and many people in the field feel that alpha-synuclein has a uh, particularly important role is, well, first of all, the families that are affected are very rare, just a handful of families ever reported anywhere, you know, on this planet. But why do we think this is important for everybody with Parkinson's disease, including people that do not have inherited mutations in this protein, is because this protein accumulates in the brain of essentially everybody with Parkinson's disease, not just those with inherited mutations. So, uh, basically, this is a little diagram of alpha-synuclein over here. Uh, it's a relatively small protein, um, 140 amino acids. They're proteins that we deal with proteins in our bodies that have thousands of amino acids. This one's a small one, should be simple. We should be able to figure out what it does, but it has been quite elusive. Nonetheless, what do we know about synuclein? Well, as I mentioned, some of these mutations here that I show with the red carrot, so the mutations that cause the Parkinson's disease in those families. Now, I should again preface this by saying that people knew about Lewy bodies for years. You've heard about Lewy bodies. They are deposits of protein in Parkinson's disease. They were described many, many years ago by neuropathologists. And most neurologists thought, or people that were interested in Parkinson's disease, considered that Lewy bodies were just the byproduct of the disease, sort of like the tombstone of some of the cells that might have disappeared. And so the Lewy bodies were just the byproduct of the disease. They were not really important for the disease, so nobody paid any attention to them, even though they were there and they've been known about for decades. So, Alpha-synuclein, mutations in it cause this rare form of Parkinson's disease, but as I mentioned, um, mutations are quite rare, but it accumulates in essentially all people with Parkinson's disease. And what the genetics tell us, the key thing is, the genetics tell us this isn't just something that accumulates, this is something that causes the disease. So it's not just a byproduct, it's causative. So this means this is extremely important, it's not just some side show. Okay. So, when mutations in synuclein were identified as causing Parkinson's disease, people used antibodies to this protein, and they started to stain the brains of Parkinson's patients. Now, previously, if you stained the brain of a patient with Parkinson's disease, uh, or you looked for Lewy bodies, there were kind of crude methods for looking for them. And you saw an occasional Lewy body here, one of these inclusions here, an inclusion there in different places. But when they went in with an antibody to, you, to synuclein, they saw deposits and accumulations of synuclein in places that were never imagined before. People didn't know there was anything going on in those cells. And in other words, the disease was much more extensive, much more extensive than just the dopamine neurons themselves. Okay. This explains why Parkinson's patients was always a mystery. It was thought to be a disease of dopamine. We give patients all dopamine. It's great for motor symptoms, but for lots of other symptoms, it doesn't work very well. And that's because of the diseases of other cells that use transmitters other than dopamine. 
Okay, so this is staining of the brain uh, of Parkinson's patients uh, for synuclein, and what you can see here, this is uh, one particular dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus. These are all dots of accumulated synuclein. This is the Raffae nucleus, which produces serotonin for our brains, and it also has synuclein in it. This is locus ceruleus that contains norepinephrine. It's got synuclein in it. Uh, nucleus basalis releases acetylcholine. Uh, this has a lot of synuclein in it, too. The synuclein in all these places. So um, the reason why we think it's important for everybody is it is causative, and it accumulates in everyone's, in all the patients with Parkinson's disease. And if you look at end-stage Parkinson's disease after it's progressed for a while, um, what you find is we used to think that the cortex, the cognitive centers up here uh, over the cerebral hemispheres, did not, were not involved in the disease. But if you stain for synuclein, what you can see here in the temporal lobe is accumulation of synuclein in the temporal lobe as well. And there is a, a staging system developed by a German neuropathologist, Tycho Brock, and his wife. Um, and what they did is they actually staged Parkinson's disease by staining for synuclein. And what they showed, quite interestingly, is at the earliest stage down here of synuclein, there's involvement of a few different cells in the brain. And as the disease progresses to stage one, two, three, four, five, six on the bottom here, um, you get involvement of more and more regions, including the neocortex. And this is just showed. It starts down here and then spreads through these other brain regions. So the synuclein deposits all over the brain, not just dopamine neurons. Okay, so what's actually happening here? One of my colleagues at UCSF who works on uh, prion disease, which produces mad cow disease, Jakob Kreutzfeldt, and other unusual conditions, thinks that actually this progression is evidence of a prion-like spread, like scrapie or mad cow disease spread through the brain. But Parkinson's disease, I mean, is not a typical prion disease, which tends to progress very rapidly and is uh, much nastier, in fact. So, um, uh, but that is an interesting possibility that the disease actually physically spreads through the brain. It's even been suggested that it might spread from the gut uh, through the nerves to the spinal cord and up to the brain, but a lot of this is still pretty speculative. So, actually, disorders of synuclein, uh, synuclein does not produce just Parkinson's disease. Um, it also produces other degenerative disorders. So some of the interesting things about synuclein that I would like to tell you about is that other families, so the original families had what are called point mutations in synuclein, which is that these red guys here, one amino acid is, is changed to a, 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 a bad amino acid. But there are other families where actually you have an extra copy of the gene or actually two extra copies of the gene, which results in an overall doubling of the amount of synuclein that you have for your whole life, basically. And just having more synuclein, not something wrong with the synuclein, but just having more of it is enough to produce the disease. Simple doubling of synuclein levels in these rare families is enough to produce disease that starts in the 20s and 30s. So what this says, it's the amount of synuclein which causes this disease. This is Parkinson's disease. Another disease, which is probably even more common than Parkinson's disease, is a form of dementia, second, second in frequency only to Alzheimer's disease, called Lewy body dementia, where Lewy bodies accumulate throughout the cortex. It is not really the same disorder as Parkinson's disease, but it also involves the accumulation of synuclein throughout the cortex and lots of other places. So that's another synucleinopathy. And another one is a disorder that we frequently see in the movement disorder clinic that looks a lot like Parkinson's disease but turns out to be somewhat different neuropathologically. Even though it's different when we look at the brains of patients affected with multiple system atrophy, it also involves the accumulation of synuclein, but in different cells that accum that, than those that accumulate synuclein in Parkinson's disease. So these are all what we call synucleinopathy. So this, this protein is central to multiple disorders. Parkinson's is uh, one of the main ones. 